Good morning and welcome to Litmus Test. Ah, after all of that math, today we're going to talk about crystal structures. And to do this, I've paired a little something for you. Let's go take a look. I use my door. Look at that. Welcome to Crystal Islands. 3D, still under construction. Crystals. Crystals are super important for certain chemists. Crystals are very important for most chemists in many different ways, but some chemists focus more on them than others. Some chemists are strictly focused on inorganic chemistry, which deals a lot with metals, stones, rocks, crystals, etc. Gets into geology if you go into the rocks part. Um, gets into mineralogy if you want to go into minerals and engineering. But, um, you know, or you can just stay in regular inorganic chemistry and do all sorts of fun stuff with crystals, metals, and oxides, and so on. Um, but it's also useful in biochemistry, looking at protein structures. Proteins will often crystallize, and it's from that that we know how a protein is folded or what it looks like. And also organic chemistry, crystals have a, uh, organic crystals have a particular melting point of particular characteristics that organic chemists find rather useful from time to time. Um, and so everyone really likes crystals, you know, they're pretty, but to discuss what a crystal is, I've decided to simplify things first into the two-dimensional cases, and then we'll go into three-dimensional so you can kind of see where we're going, what we're going to start off talking about first, and um, like where we're going to go from there. Trust me, there's a fair bit to unpack here. So let's start by looking at some crystal and talking about a lattice, lattice points, and lattice structure and a unit cell. A bunch of these sound weird, but that's what we're going to look at today. So laid out in front of us here, I have probably the most familiar two-dimensional crystal. Uh, well, okay, the most familiar two-dimensional crystal is this guy, but this is so boring. Now let's look at this one. This is just your regular grade checkerboard, right? A repeating pattern of white and black squares that alternate. We usually like to use this as a starting point for crystals because sodium chloride, table salt, has a three-dimensional version of this that it likes to crystallize in. But before we get to the 3D version, we're going to start with the 2D version to define some vocabulary. So the first thing when we talk about a crystal is that a crystal is a repeating pattern of atoms. It is a bunch of atoms in a particular arrangement that repeat over and over and over again. and this is a little bit weird to think about uh, right away um, because it looks like, oh, well, you know, it's just like this. It's just, you know, they alternate, easy peasy, who cares? Hold on. When we talk about crystals, we talk about a lattice. You might think of a lattice as a word you've never heard before, or if you have heard of it, something that like goes in your garden and has like some sort of fancy fence wooden thing that your flowers ride on. In this case, a lattice refers to the arrangement of the atoms, the repeating unit of the atoms. Let's look at what we mean by repeating unit. So here I've marked out a couple spots on this grid. These blue panes I'm going to call lattice points, and they're sort of a arbitrary defined points that we're going to use to repeat. The white glass, the regular glass, is just going to be a way to visualize what we call the unit cell. This little construction here is a unit cell. It is built around these four light blue lattice points. These lattice points are where the unit cell begins and ends, and they're the repeating points of our crystal. The unit cell is the repeating unit of our crystal, and we can build the unit cell over by just translating this over and up in the same direction that the lattice points lie on. Because this is Minecraft, we're going to be using sideways, just, you know, x, y coordinates for the moment. If we build this over and build the next couple unit cells, you can see very quickly that this unit cell on the inside looks the same as that unit cell. Looks the same as that unit cell. They all have this same characteristic of the black in the middle and the whites on the edge. We can build it in the other direction, too, to show that this is a good crystal, that it repeats in both directions. We could 
define the unit cell a little bit differently. We could have said that our lattice points that define the corners of the unit cell are on the white squares. And if we did that, then, well, it's still kind of the same thing. It's still a crystal, and it still repeats in all directions. See that? Now, this is where things get a little weird, but uh, ignore that for the moment. And you just see that this unit cell repeats in all directions and makes the crystal. Where we choose these lattice points, the corners of our unit cell, don't really matter. We can build the checkerboard by starting on the black squares just as easily as if we start on the white squares. Now, the first question most people have when they look at these unit cells is, why did you build it so big? Why not just build, I mean, it's just a repeating pattern, right, of alternating white and black squares. Surely all you need to do is sort of define how the squares repeat in two dimensions. And that sounds very reasonable. That sounds like a good way to start building a cell. But uh, as we'll see in a moment, in fact, let's go ahead and build that cell right now. Finish clearing this out. And what happens if we define our unit cell like this? So that our lattice points are right here. That's the repeating unit, right? It's a repeating white-black unit, right? The next one, you know, the next one should be right here. And the next one should be right here. Right? I've moved over exactly like, you know, here's one repeating unit cell, and then here's the next one. But notice that's not how unit cells really work. Notice that right here in the middle, I could have defined another unit cell. And if I look in this square, notice how the two blacks and the two whites are on certain diagonals. If we move one square over, they're on different diagonals. Here's the first diagonal, here's the second diagonal. Again, notice the black goes kind of up and to the right. Here, the black goes up and to the left. Up and to the right, up and to the left. Also notice that when we define our unit cells, they have to touch, they have to share sides, and they have to share atoms. So this black atom is shared by these two unit cells. Because it's being shared by both of those unit cells, it has to be the same, like this black atom here has to be the same as this one here, because that's how lattice points are defined. Lattice points are defined on the same atom in all unit cells. So because, yeah, it is just a repeating unit of white and black squares, but because two unit cells don't match, this unit cell has the wrong pattern compared to this unit cell, for a checkerboard we end up defining the lattice to be a little bit bigger than you might expect so that it looks like this. We would then say that the lattice, or the unit cell, contains two black and two white atoms. That's a little weird, but look at it like this. There's one black atom in the middle, and then you can see there's a quarter of black atom in each of the corners. Well, four quarters is one, plus one is two. You can also see that there's a half white here and a half white there. Half white, half white four halves is two. So there are two white and two black. And this is just a very simple repeating square lattice. Technically we would call this a face-centered square because there is one atom in the middle and there are um, centered and there are repeating square units around it. If we wanted an even simpler uh, crystal we could use just you know the stone here where this lattice is the same as this lattice is the same as this lattice, but that's too boring. Let's look at a slightly different version. You'll notice that this is still kind of a checkerboardy type uh, pattern, but now we've got uh, the white squares are farther apart. You know, there's a whole ring of black around each white square, sort of, or at least that's how we can define one unit cell. So we could define these black squares. We might imagine in this, in this particular case, we might imagine that black is just space and white is the only real atom. In that case, we could define the unit cell to be the space around an atom. You'll notice that if we build out our cell, sure enough, it repeats in both directions. 
checking many directions is very important for a unit cell because you need to make sure that your lattice points work in all directions. And there are some unit cells that have different behavior in two or three different directions. And we'll see that in the future when we look at a three-dimensional one. So one way to define this unit cell is just kind of like this. But we could have equally defined the unit cell with the lattice points on the corners of the atoms and all the space in the middle. This is, in fact, how we might define a unit cell in real life. We usually like to put the lattice points on the atoms because then we can see that this is a repeating arrangement of these square, you know, of these white squares. These white squares repeat in this direction, and they repeat in this direction. So in this case, this unit cell is actually a simpler kind of unit cell than this one. This unit cell, we might say, is just a simple square. In three dimensions, a simple cubic. Because the atoms are only on the corners and not in the middle. Again, we could have defined our lattice parameter a little differently. We could have said that our lattice points are on the space around the center, as opposed to on the atoms around space. But they both work. They both allow you to build this pattern that we see here. Finally, let's look at a weird one. So you'll notice this one's a bit bigger. And you notice that in this case, if we think of the black squares as being atoms, that they don't really line up in a nice square fashion like they did on those two. In this case, we could try to define the unit cell a little bit differently. Let's say that we take this sort of construction here, that we make it a triangle. Minecraft doesn't draw diagonals well, so I've adopted this kind of weird uh, thing here to represent a triangle. We might think that, oh hey, a triangle is a really good unit cell, because it makes a triangle there, and we scoot over, and that makes a triangle there, and we scoot over, and I mean, look, the, it, it makes a triangle here, and you see that pattern just keeps repeating? But this is where I said checking in multiple directions is important, and being careful with what you define as unit cell is important. So let's say we try to check upwards. If we just go straight upwards, well, this lattice point doesn't line up with another one here. Uh, in fact, like, see how the shape has one lattice point at top and two on bottom? This one has one lattice point up here and two on bottom. Well, look at this lattice point here. These are three lattice points, right? They should look exactly the same, but notice how they're flipped upside down. There are two lattice points up top and one on the bottom. It's true that a triangular grid is a lattice, but the way chemists define lattice, we don't like having to flip or rotate our cells every time we move them. And moving our unit cell just a little bit over this way and then having to flip it this way and then we'd have to flip it again to go this way. That just seems like that's just, it's just doing a lot of work. See here, they're flipped. They're the wrong way. Everything on this, inside this unit cell, yeah, that looks the same as this unit cell, but it doesn't look the same as this unit cell. It looks opposite. You can sort of think of this as like the Triforce. You've got three golden triangles that all point upward in the uh, on the sides, but one empty triangle space that points downward in the middle. So a triangle isn't the best choice of a unit cell for this grid. In a three-dimensional space, or if we had you know diagonal lines, we might call this a hexagon, because you see it makes like a hexagon. But with this little point in the middle here, a hexagon's not necessarily the best way we could define this unit cell. If we try to define it with a square like we did earlier, we'll notice that this does work if we go sideways. Defining the lattice points around this black point here, sure. That works if you go sideways, but when you try to go up and down, again, the lattice kind of fails. This unit cell doesn't look the same as this unit cell. So that's not a good choice of lattice points. So does that mean that this isn't a crystal? This certainly looks like a crystal, a repeating pattern of points. Well, it still is. 
we just have to find the right unit cell to define it. So, what does that unit cell look like? Let's say, again, that we want to define our unit cell on atoms. Starting on atoms, let's come back to this corner, and let's say that instead of three points, let's use four. So now we have these four points. You might notice this kind of looks like the little Tetris S piece. Let's make it, oops, on color. Let's make it look a little bit more like that Tetris S piece. All right, we'll add this, this, uh, this, and uh, cut that one. There we go, that's what I wanted. So now we have this shape that looks a little bit more like the Tetris S piece. Not exactly, of course. But I chose to leave those two cubes off for a moment to sort of help you see and not clutter this too much. Because what I really wanted to draw is diagonal lines. I want to draw a diagonal line from this point here to this point over there and back. Notice that makes a parallelogram, like, you know, one of those slanted squares that nobody likes learning about. This parallelogram, does that repeat? Well, if we shift our lattice point from here to here, does that repeat the same as it did before? Well, let's see here. We've got one, two, three, four. Okay, one. If we shift it over, how about this way? One, two, three, four. Okay, that, that does work. See, if we shift it over, then all of a sudden we get this, and I'm going to use the blue here again. So if we shift this over one and connect them up, you can kind of see where they look like it's just two of these S's that kind of just merge together. It's a bit messy, I know, but you get the idea, I hope. If I drew it out here, you might be able to see it a little bit more clearly. See how these are repeating unit cells, and you can imagine that if I just draw the lines in here in the middle, they'll all connect up. But what about in this direction? After all, if I just go straight up here to the next point, well, the next unit cell doesn't exist right there. And that's where the fact that these are diagonal comes into play. If this was a diagonal line, you can imagine that, just like we can draw this line straight across, like that, we could also draw a diagonal line straight up. Or at least straight along the diagonal as best as Minecraft can make it. And if we do that, now we can look and see, oh hey, this could easily be another lattice right there. And in fact it is. The lattice just goes diagonally. So instead of having a straight square grid, now we have a parallelogram or a rhombus grid, depending on exactly how we define the thing, of course. So again, we can imagine that we have this parallelogram here, but if we keep drawing the straight line, we go this way, and we can draw it again and go this way, and we can draw it again and go this way. Notice how we don't ever have to turn that lattice. We never have to turn it or flip it or rotate it. It just keeps going in the same direction, and every time it looks exactly the same. And even if we draw the same up there, you'll notice it still continues in this direction, just as this one continues here. Three of these do combine into a hexagon. There is, roughly, a parallelogram here, par parallelogram here, and one... Oh, man, that's going to give people motion sickness right there. There are three that combine into a hexagon, and that's where we see the hexagonal symmetry. And of course you can cut a parallelogram in half along the diagonal, like that to make your triangles when we see the triangular symmetry. So this has been a quick look into what a lattice and a unit cell and crystals are from a chemical point of view. We have a repeating arrangement of atoms and we pick points usually on those atoms, just imaginary points, draw imaginary lines between them, and then just repeat those lines forever. It's very important at this point to emphasize that these are not chemical bonds. We are not drawing the way atoms are connected to each other. They're not sharing electrons. They're just next to each other in this arrangement. And drawing the lines is just an imaginary arrangement that's meant to help you see how the 
lattice, how the unit cell repeats, how the atoms repeat, but they don't represent how the atoms bond. In most crystals, atoms are just stuck together kind of like magnets, well, electromagnets. It's just positive and negative charges that are just being held together because opposites attract. There's not a bond in the traditional sense. Nonetheless, we can still draw these lines and use them as a helpful guide. So, hopefully this helps you see two-dimensional lattice points, as well as what a unit cell is and what we mean when we say lattice in a crystal. Coming up next will be three-dimensional unit cells and three-dimensional crystals, but that's going to take a little bit longer. Luckily, I've got several videos that are coming out between, uh, well, before then, because taping, so until next time, stay safe and don't catch on fire.